Prepare the way, part two. A voice of one calling out in the wilderness. Clear up the way of Jehovah. Make a straight highway through the desert for our God. Isaiah 40, verse 3. Rudy wrote the second question out on the blackboard and then drew a line down the middle. On one side of the line, he wrote the name Jesus, and on the other side, he wrote out the name John. Now, can anyone tell me the difference between the baptism John performed and the baptism Jesus' disciples did? Let's start with you, Cana. The boy frowned. He shoved his hands in his pockets. Come, mention one difference between what John did and what Jesus did. What can you remember? Can I mention one? Wendell pleaded. Not now, Wendell, Rudy said. Cana frowned. I don't know. You do know. You just, have, you just don't view this part of history as important. That's the problem. I'm not moving on until you can tell me one difference. Cana hung his head. <sighs> I would say since John Roll, John's role was to prepare the way for Jesus, his task was more getting the Israelites ready to accept him as the Messiah. He answered the question with a shrug of his shoulders. Yes, true. There is another aspect to the baptism as well. Wendell bumped his head on his desk. Can I just please... Wendell, who is the teacher here, you or me? Wendell's response was to throw his hands in the air. Then he put his face down on his desk and circled his arms around his head. Thank you, Wendell. Both men performed baptisms. John's role was to point the way towards Jesus. His disciples' baptism was a recognition of their sins against God's law covenant and sincere repentance from those sins. Now, we come to another question. Jesus approached John to be baptized. Was Jesus a sinner? Why would he need to be baptized? What do all of you think? And yes, Wendell, we all know you have the answer, Rudy said. Wendell's head came up. His response came quick. Well, Jesus was not a sinner. Sin means to miss the mark, to have a blemish. Our king was here on earth as a perfect man in every way. So that means, Rudy held his hand up. That's enough, Wendell, and you answered correct. So, for the rest of the class, what does this indicate about his baptism? Why baptize, if not to repent and wash away sin? The answer has to do with John's role in all of this. <sighs> they don't know the answer. Wendell was defiant, and he put his head in his arms again. Cana shifted on his feet. Can I sit down? Rudy gave the boy a nod, and, sank to, and he sank to his seat. A murmur rippled throughout the class for a minute or two as the children discussed the question amongst themselves. The sound of Bible pages being turned filled the classroom. Finally, Ga finally Gabriela, who seemed to have to be elected the group representative, raised her hand. Yes, what do you think? Well, John's role was to pave a way for Jesus. The two prophecies in Jesus' own words confirm this. In Matthew chapter 3, in the 13th verse, it says, Jesus came to John to be baptized. So, so we think it's a presentation. Jesus is presenting himself for his own role in God's grand purpose. Rudy flashed a big smile at them. Now this is the kind of thinking I like. Correct. Jesus, being without sin, was in no need of repentance. His baptism was about presenting himself before God to do his Father's will. When he came up from the water, God gave him verbal approval from the heavens and acknowledged Jesus as his Son. From that moment, Jesus commenced on the path he was sent here to do, preach the good news of the kingdom, and eventually lay down his life for sinful, dying humankind. So this leads to another question. What did Jesus preach about? 
I suggest all of you take notes. This might, might end up on a test. Hint, hint. Rudy made his way to the blackboard. Under John's name, he wrote, One, baptize those that recognized they were sinful and failed to live up to the law covenant. He preached for repentance. He cited the scriptures Acts 19.4 and Matthew 3, 1 and 2. Number two, prepared God's people to accept Jesus as the Messiah. He cited scriptures Isaiah 40, verse 3, and Luke 3, 1 through 18. Number three, baptized Jesus so that he could start his ministry to preach the good news of God's kingdom. Jesus was not a sinful person. The significance of his baptism meant that he was ready to begin the work he was sent to do on earth. Matthew 3.13 and Luke 3.21 When he finished writing on the blackboard, Rudy faced the class again. Wendell, please stand up and tell us about the things Jesus preached about. This is your moment, child. Wendell raised his head and looked around, not quite sure he heard right. Wendell, would you like to inform the class? Come to the blackboard, Rudy said. This time, the boy needed no prodding. Wendell shot from his sweet seat the way a jack-in-the-box springs from the container it is housed in. Rudy handed him a piece of chalk. Write each item down. Wendell nodded and began his answer. Jesus was sent to earth first to vindicate his father's name. This is being done through God's kingdom or government. Satan had brought reproach on Jehovah in the Garden of Eden by imply, implying that he was withholding something good from Adam and Eve. He told our first parents they could be like God, knowing good and bad. Satan also lied to them and said they would never die. From this account, we learn how humankind got off to a rough start. Every horror a person can imagine happened under fallen humankind's rule. A lot of people blame God for the evils they lived with. When Jesus walked the earth, he told the truth about his Father in the heavens. He taught them spiritual truths. He healed the sick and raised the dead. All of this was just an example of what life would be like under his future rule. Our society is the fulfillment of those things he preached about. Scriptures of interest may be Matthew 4, 23 and 24 and Luke 4, 42 and 43.